Uh, There is one man that can hold that title, uh, the man who is the God-man, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Uh, Jesus Christ, I hope you can say this morning, is your Savior. But regardless, He is the Savior. Jesus Christ, who is Lord. Uh, Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. This is a Truth Transforms Truth Nugget. A daily dose of truth for your daily transformation. Well, praise God. We serve a good and awesome God. If you would, go ahead and join me this morning in the book of Luke. Uh, We're going to be continuing in the book of Luke as we look at the Christmas story uh, today. Uh, We looked at Luke last week. We looked at the glorious message that was delivered as an angel of the Lord appeared to those shepherds out in the field. And we're going to look at specifically at the birth of Christ this morning and how we can celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, We're going to be looking at Luke uh, chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. Let me begin by reading the word of God. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Carnerius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, now as we turn to this time of the proclamation of your word, I ask that your spirit be with me. I ask that your message would come forward. Lord, prepare our hearts and prepare our minds to be able to respond to your word. Help it to stir in us an affection for you, a love for you, a deep desire for you, Lord. As we look at the birth of Jesus Christ, help it to stir such a passion in our heart. We don't know what to do with it, but to glorify you. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so the title of the message is Celebrate the Birth of Our Savior. Celebrate the birth of our Savior. You'll notice I said, our Savior. This is not a Savior. This is the Savior, and and hopefully this is our Savior. Now, there are many Saviors in the world. A fireman is a Savior. A fireman will run into a fire and save someone that is stuck in this fire. He'll save them from death, save them from great illness and, and, and great injury, but this fireman is not the Savior. Uh, a doctor is a savior. A, a doctor will, will save you when you have uh, something, some great illness. A doctor will work with you and treat that illness, but that doctor certainly is not the savior. And, you know, parents can even be saviors for their children. Uh, you teach them right and wa- wrong. You keep them from getting into trouble. You keep them out of harm's way. So indeed, parents are saviors, but they are not the savior. Uh, There is one man that can hold that title, uh, the man who is the God-man, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Uh, Jesus Christ, I hope you can say this morning, is your Savior, but regardless, he is the Savior. Jesus Christ, who is Lord. Uh, Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. And so this morning, we're going to be looking at the birth of the Savior. And it's important to remember, well, well, then what does he save us from? If he's such a great Savior, does he save us from a miserable life? Does he save us from making poor decisions? And maybe he saves us from bitterness and unforgiveness. Maybe he saves us from broken marriages and fractured relationships. And these are all great benefits of the gospel. 
Uh, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, your relationship should be get, getting better. You should have uh, the peace of God, and you should have more peace in your life, but this is not the gospel, and that is not why Jesus came to this earth. He came to this earth to save us from destruction, to save us from the penalty of sin, because we all deserve the wrath of God that comes upon us, and Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is the Savior, and I hope Jesus Christ is your Savior, so we can say together, He is our Savior. So let's celebrate our Savior. We need to remember uh, that salvation came to this world for eternal consequences. It didn't come for just temporary changes in our life. Uh, So today we celebrate the Savior. On Christmas Day we celebrate the Savior, and that's what we want to look at today. Uh, So we're going to take a look here at at verses 1 to 7. We're going to uh, look at the first few verses. Now we'll start with verses 1 and 2, and what we see is a deliverance of the decree. And we see that a decree is delivered, so let's read them again here. Chapter 2, verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Cornelius was governor of Syria. Now in those days, at that time, a decree went out. A decree, a royal edict, a decree from Caesar Augustus. Uh, Caesar Augustus was a very powerful man. Uh, Caesar Augustus, uh, Caesar being the title, his, he is the emperor, so he is Caesar. He's second in the line of Caesars. Augustus, not his real name. His real name being Gaius Octavius. Uh, this, this man is, a, is an incredibly powerful man. He is the, the grandson of Julius Caesar, the founder of uh, the Roman Empire. Uh, he has great power and peace has been brought upon Rome at this time. And so he, he declares a census for the whole region, for the whole Roman Empire. This is the first time a census goes out to the entire area. This is a great demonstration of uh, him and his, his saving effort because he was known to be the savior of the world. Uh, That is, in fact, how he was referred at times, the savior of the world. Uh, Again, I mentioned his name is Gaius Octavius, but he's known as Augustus, uh, because Augustus was the title bestowed upon him. Augustus means exalted one. Augustus means majesty. Uh, Augustus means venerable. Uh, The emperors of Rome were seen as gods. He was seen as a demigod, as a, as a, as a divine being. He's, he's semi-divine while he's living, but then he dies, and now he's a full god. Uh, and he's put into the, the uh, list of gods that, that they all would have worshipped. Well, this is a very powerful man. He's trying to display his power. And isn't it interesting, the contrast that we see here, uh, where he is known as the savior of the world, yet we see a little weak baby Born in a manger, that is the true Savior of the world and truly worthy of worship. Uh, Of course, this emperor wanted worship, as all emperors did, uh, and that's why Christians often were beheaded, because they would not say Caesar is Lord. But not only would they would not say Caesar is Lord, but they replaced that. And instead of saying Caesar is Lord, they said Jesus is Lord. Blasphemy, right? Blasphemy in the Roman Empire. So that's the background that's what we see here. Well, so a decree is sent out. This is the first registration, and the decree goes out from Caesar Augustus. And we move on, and we see that there's a response to the decree then. 